so how's everybody going doing today um yeah just leaving a comments where you're watching from it'd be great i'm looking forward to hearing from you um so today we're gonna do is i have been want to do lately on these um these live streams is answer your questions there's a form in the description there if you oh, you want and the reason i ask you to fill out the form it just has a, a few uh, other details um like if you have a a public family tree so i can take a, a look at it that form you you should start seeing on all my video descriptions some of my older ones might not have it yet um so it's there all the time and it'll be on all these live videos um going forward please make use of it i i'd love to um answer your questions on these or in a, a separate live a separate video besides the live stream um <clears throat> so today if i i don't have a specific question that i was answering i it's just actually some general things and some things that have been going on and people have asking me lately i just wanted to get get back to basics because i realize um a lot of people don't even know where to begin in starting to find their family tree um to start not finding their family tree but to build their family tree so i thought it's really kind of important to get back to the 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 basics of it all and um so um i'm gonna do that <clears throat> yeah it's and then my hat's getting a little it's getting a little warmer now here and um I, I, frankly i need haircuts probably so it's getting a little itchier on my head um so today like i said i'm, I'm gonna be if you do have a question put it in the chat and put it in that form i'll be looking at that form every so often to see what's updated um just to update you a little last week i had a really um great question from a, a um tomorrow person trying to identify um one of their dutch family members uh or shares the family surname anyways uh, because he was doing some research on that surname and some time they spent in canada um after the the stream the, i had gotten contact with the, the the person answering the question we were able to hammer out a few things and find a few more definitive answers which are, are really good um so let's go with the like i said i'm going to try to do some basics and what it what uh what you need to do when you when you start your family tree because i know a lot of people um have that struggle they just don't know where to start um and usually when people ask me where to start on most things i'll say start at the beginning but actually in when you're doing your family tree it's the, the opposite you're, you're starting at the end um because you're starting at the most recent thing and you're you're working your way back <clears throat> so this was this topic came up because again a couple people recently have messaged me privately through this or through other forums and are asking about how to start the family what do they need the family tree what do they need to do ask me questions because they're looking at using um one of the D dna sites to to start the family tree and um that's one of the things i want to stress i'm not a genetic genealogist so a lot of the intricacies of dna i you know i have a good understanding but i'm not an expert there's people that are far more knowledgeable about that <clears throat> but I, I i do want to say um really when a lot of people get those um dna kits they're they're looking for their ethnicity they're trying to find out if they're irish scottish german whatever and sometimes they're very disappointed because what it tells them is not what they thought was true uh and sometimes that's correct and but you also need to take it with a grain of salt just understanding um that you can have different results actually from different companies doesn't mean one company's 
better or more correct than the other. It just means what they're using to match you is matching differently. They have a different pool. Um, I really want to uh, stress stress that. Um, I know even myself, I did a joke video, and some people got it. That was a joke a couple years ago about um, Ancestry DNA changing the results. Um, and it, it, it's just as they refine their their um, control populations, if you want to call it that, um, the groups that they're using to uh, designate people from, they, they made some changes and the parts of my DNA and it matched. They, they thought, well, they matched better with this particular group. Um, there's a lot of reasons those could be accurate and a lot of reasons they cannot be accurate. Um, a good example would be um, when you're looking at places around the, the border, um, of different countries or regions, they they might have some inaccuracies just because um, those people would might tend to, in in their general population, have a uh, contact or a lot of the markers that maybe this other population is, and they get mixed. It it gets some confusion. Um, a good example is um, people finding Ashkenazi Jew in their family, in their DNA, but they don't know where that comes from. They can't find an, a relative that is necessarily Jewish, especially at the connection, at the levels. Um, often they're minute, but they're just not really sure. And that could be that they do have a number of ancestors maybe in the past, and that adds up that we had some Ashkenazi Jews. Could also mean that the region, what the, they're using to match these from, uh, that, that these people's ancestors come from, they come from an area where there would be a lot of Ashkenazi Jewish people um, and might be pr predominantly that, but there's some mix in with the, the group of people already living there. Um, same as the the borderlands of Scotland and, and England, you'd have some overlap there. So um, things might show up as English on as unfortunate or fortunate as you might see it as a Celtic person, I guess I would say it's unfortunate. Um, just because I, I like uh, just a little dig at the English people every so often. But uh, no, it just can it can give you some misleading things. So that that's actually my, my first rule. I want to talk to people. Don't put your stakes in the, the DNA, ethnicity. Um, they're really good. They're fun. But... Um, the, the reason to do those tests are not to actually figure out what percent Scottish or whatever you, you are. Um, there's benefits that go far beyond that. And unfortunately, so many people only use that side of it that they they don't see the actual benefits. And, uh, and it's not helpful for other people doing genealogy research. <clears throat> so, like I said, we're going to start. Um, and with Family Tree, you start at the end, not at the beginning. So one of the first things that people need to do is that they need to, when you want to start your family tree, you need to talk with, first of all, you're, you're going to talk with your oldest living ancestors that, that you have. So in most people's family, this is a grandparent, uh, or multiple grandparents, um, possibly a great grandparent. If you have a great grandparent, grab them. Um, definitely you want to, you want to get that information while while they're still living, um, and and you want to start with the the basic questions. So if you were to somebody was to come to you and want to find you and where you're from, what you would they would start asking about your parentage, your grandparents, what you remember. Um, and at this point, it, exact dates aren't always as important as getting that that time period and places right as well. Places are, in a way, are, are more important because um, when you're searching records, often you don't have that luxury of, it, it doesn't give you, well, search within this many miles radius where um, where often when you're searching in records, they do have a, a spot where you can search in the time frame, you know, so many years before, so many years after. So um, getting a time frame is um, not always as important as getting the location and then is exact the location. It's a little piece of advice that, and, and also what you need to do once you start getting this information. So you, you'd go to your grandparents, 
um, you, you start asking them what they know about their parents. Where are their parents from? Um, what were their parents' names? If, if, you, if you're not already aware of that, where were their parents born? And again, we want to try to be as exact as possible. Um, if they if they can't be exact, it, you can do you can search by um, a a region in a, in a sense that you can look for records for um, for instance, I, you could look in in a county. I said a county is a county records is, or a county area is as opposed to a specific town or city. Um, and you also got to remember a lot of that stuff is it's not where you find it today wouldn't be where it was actually um, recorded as municipalities, regions, whatever, change borders frequently. And that goes for countries too. And that's actually one of the other uh, problems with the DNA is, um, for instance, if you have German DNA, what, what is German DNA? Germany didn't really exist in the sense of what we know Germany of uh, until the 1800s. Um, there were Germanic people and they were from different regions. So you have Germans that live in um, the Czech Republic that were, or Chechnya, uh, Polish Germans, you have, so if finding, if you were, if were just going purely on DNA and you would have people that were your ancestors that you were expecting to find in Germany and because it tells you you have German DNA and you don't look at Poland because you haven't actually asked the questions. Uh, that's where you're, you know, it can be, it can lead you astray. So, um, so let's, you start with, you're asking those people the, the, the questions that you, that you need to, to put together their basic story. Um, everybody probably knows their own birth date. So that's a really good place to start. Get your, your grandparents, their, their information, their birth dates, um, their marriage dates. Reason I say their marriage dates is, um, depending on the, the area and the age of your grandparents, those are, a record sometimes that are available um, depending on the jurisdictions on how long they release those records where you probably aren't going to find their um, birth certificate on public record yet <clears throat> uh, but you might find their marriage records um, find their parents names their parents names you can find when their parents died because some of the best records to have are marriage and death records um, and the reason I say that is because um, most modern, by and by modern I mean since the um, mid to the late 1800s and even some of the earlier, depending on the, the areas, those records contain a lot of information. Your, for instance, your your death record might contain your parents' names, um, their ethnicity, where they were born. Uh, it might just be what country they were born in, or or um, it can be as general as where were they born and sometimes I've seen that if it's a foreign country it usually just has the country sometimes we'll have a specific place name if it's within the the country that is the records kept it often has the region or the city um, so those are great places to start so if you have your if you know your grandparents parents when they passed away you start looking for their death records um, as they might be be available and again it depends on the the year range you want to get that you want to find out if they what if they know what their grandparents names were uh again m most people know their grandparents know their names um and i find when you're talking to older people particularly they won't necessarily remember years but they'll remember ages um so the question instead of saying, if, if they might say, I don't know when my grandparents died. Do you remember how old you were? What, what Were you a teenager when your grandparents died? Were you already married? Those type of questions um, are, are sometimes the, the way. And again, because you're asking about a date range, you can start to piece together and be able to search um, broadly. Um, so you want to start building those things back together. You want to get 
get a simple um, blank um, family tree or I'm a really big fan of fan charts. As I've done a couple of videos of showing that because it's just a nice, easy way. So you get uh, a couple of those and you start placing people and putting your the little bit of information you can find out about them. Find out their, their brother, any of their brothers and sisters' names because that's important. Even if you're just trying to go back on that straight line, having that information is really helpful because when you start looking at things like censuses um some of that and some of that the census have information you might not be able to find out elsewhere um such as the year of birth um origin of the people um it, it helps you clarify you're talking to the, the right family especially if you're looking and your your family has a, a certain heritage which is the predominant heritage of that community uh I'm going for my own example in, in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, where my my grandmother's, um, my mother's mother's family is from, a, is a rural area and it is almost all Scottish Presbyterians. Um, they're Scottish Catholics as well, but knowing that difference even helps. Um, but a lot of names are very common and very repetitive, especially um, when you're looking at a lot of cultures um, have naming patterns, whereas, uh, for instance, the firstborn son is named after the father, secondborn son is named after the father's father, thirdborn son is named after the mother's father, etc. So you get a lot of repeat names. So if you're looking for a John McDonald, you want to you want to know what John McDonald he is. Um, you might find there's three or four in that community because they're named after the the. Uh, the same the same person so they're cousins but you want to make sure you get that right cousin and having that the brothers and sisters or your grandparents and stuff can help you sort of at least guide you in the, the right um the right place because when you're looking at records and you're looking at a census record or you're even looking at different birth records you can you can and even a person's death record you can see that if it was a family member that was the informant that it says that it's their son and if that's not the, a person you have listed as a, a son, and it's probably not the right person. Um, or in a census, you can see um, what what all the children's names were, and you can look at um, the, the, the person that you know, for instance, if this was your grandparent or their grandparents inform you about your, their, their parents or their grandparents, um, you'll be able to check those other families' names to see if they have these um, people that are their brothers and sisters listed as the children in, in that family. Um, so you want to get that information. Uh, again, it's really good. You know, often you just want to go down that straight line, but you want to get that um, lateral information because it's very helpful in your initial research, but it's also helpful in, especially if you get into any collaborative type research um, that you'll see there's a, there's opportunities for um, you to do collaborative research. So you might you might be able to find a, a second or third cousin that's also already done some family research on a, on a common ancestor and they might have a, a, a well-documented, well-sourced, well-researched family tree. Why duplicate all that work? Um, let's see what you can do to connect them and, you know, assist and help expand the work that they already have put into it. Um, so those are kind of my, my, my starting points, um, asking those questions and getting that. And some of that might seem pretty obvious and it is, but it's still one of those things you, you sometimes get overwhelmed when you start thinking about everything you you need to do and you, you want to start building it back um sometimes you're 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 focused too far on the going in the past you forget to look at the the more the the, the circumstances surrounding um you want to ask questions such as um because because a lot of times again people will remember things not maybe especially along in the past, it might not be they remember an exact year something happened, 
um, they might remember a time frame. So you want to know the start looking at some of the history of the the communities around that that time uh, that that they were um, that that things would have happened. For instance, um, asking a, a grandparent that was born in the 1920s, um, which they'd be getting quite old now, but you, you want to ask them, you know, um, about whether they had a sibling that served in the war, whether they, um, if, you know, if they're mentioning they had a, a brother or they had an uncle that served in the war. You, you want to find out that type of things because, again, those are records sometimes that you can find available. Um, some public, depending on the circumstances of the individual during the war, and some um, where you might not expect to find them. Uh, for instance, in um, information when you're looking up about um, a, a legion in a certain area, sometimes they have profiles on their members in there. Uh, magazines and newsletters that can be public. Um, you want to find out what type of things they did, what church they belong to. Church is very important um, because before the government started keeping a lot of these records, churches kept them. Churches had were the the ones who were the guardians of marriage records. They have baptism records. Baptism records often have the date of, of birth, or you can know what the tradition is in that particular church. Um, so you have a, an idea if it's traditionally that people are, are baptized very shortly after their birth, um, you'd be able to, to, to do that. And it also gives you a, a starting point. You know, if a person was baptized on July 14th, 1841, for instance, uh, if you're able to find that baptism record, you know they, they were born before July 14th. 1841. So when you're looking at their birth records, if you come across somebody and they're um, born in 1843, chances are they're not the, the right person that, that you want to connect with. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so those are some of the things you do want to know. So you want to you want to get into and you want to start asking. Um, you want to ask about things if there's um, family members that um, were involved in any particular organizations. Um, could be the they were part of the Mason's Lodge, they were part of the Orange Lodge, they were a um, Knights of Columbus. Um, they were. They sung in their church choir. Um, knowing those type of things will even give you information where you can you can start to search by searching church records, um, searching other records, searching community newspapers. Um, I've been having a lot of um, fun recently going back and reading some newspapers from the, that just um, have been adapted on the Nova Scotia archives for the small town where my, my grandmother grew up in the... 1930s. Uh, I'm fascinated by some of the things that were <laughs> top news, but even the, the the thinking of some of the the people at the time is expressed. And then you, um, they're great little things because often they have, and especially in small communities, they have people who visit. In fact, I was looking at one section. It was. Um, around the Christmas vacation, it lists all these different students who who came back and are spending the Christmas holidays with their 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 family, um, and so it mentioned who they were, who their parents were, what university they went to. Um, so there's lots of information that can be found. Uh, and again, if you you know the if you're looking through these and you knew that your your uh, great grand uncle went to a certain university and you see one of these things and you you see him talking about there then you might get an idea who his parents were if you if you if you're not able to find that directly you'd get an idea of um, who some of the siblings are um, so those are are things you really need to start to to look at and and research um so <clears throat> Um, 
the, the other thing is you need a, a place to organize this information. Now, I, I, uh, I recommend getting a, a, a binder to start with, or um, you can use note cards, whatever you're comfortable with, besides just doing the electronic format. Um, electronic format's nice, but it's, it's nice sometimes to have those little written notes. Um, little written notes. Go, go start searching family albums. Uh, I, I find this is something people have always done. Um, I and mean, they used to do more so um, in older generations on the back of pictures. They write some amazing details um, of not only who the people were, the year, the date if they know when it was taken, um, what the occasion was for being the picture being taken, because it, it taking pictures and having them developed um, was not a, necessarily a cheap process. So often it, it's not like today where we we have our, our phone and we carry it everywhere and we take pictures where people take pictures of their meal and post it. You won't generally find those things. But if they were out at a fancy restaurant and because, you know, their rich uncle Ted had come into town and he had treated the family to um, – to a, a certain restaurant, there might be a picture of the gathering. Um, so you, you'll be able to find those things and often they'll have the names of everybody that's listed um, there in the back of the pictures. Um, they might even have comments like um, Uncle John. So when you're, that gives you the relationship, um, et cetera, but it's really, Really important to take your time and do that. Um, I find when you're going through old pictures with a grandparent, a great grandparent, they love it. Any older person, because I mean, much like ourselves, we like to to reminisce and we like to remember things. Um, pictures are a great way of jogging memories. It's a great way to to uh, to get, to get stories flowing, um, and it is really, yeah, really a good way to, like I said, jog memories. They might, you might see a picture of a, a, a Christmas, a Christmas celebration or, and you'll get to talking and they might start remembering things about their grandparents, great, even their great grandparents that might not come up through normal conversation. Um, so I recommend when you're doing that, I, I recommend taking notes and keeping things organized. Um, I recommend always having your camera, your phone with you because this is an amazing tool. Um, because it's, it's a you can take pictures, you can record audio. Most uh, most phones have a voice recording program built into them as a, one of the insta pre-installed apps. If they don't look for one, um, just go to the Play Store. I, I use an Android, so I go to the Google Play Store and I. Just look for their voice recorder. Um, and you'll you'll find one, and they usually do a good job. And again, they're a great way, especially when a family members talking and they're telling a story. Um, you might not have time to write everything down, and you might feel awkward about transcribing them as they're talking and say, "Oh, can you just go back and can you repeat that?" Um, whereas if you have it recorded, you can play it backwards and forwards. Um, having having your your camera with you because often they might well want to part with the, um, the pictures that they have there. Um, and you can very much understand that, especially since again, pictures were kind of a rare thing, but you can then take a picture of that to, to have that for your own record. And you can take a picture of the back as well. Um, even if you are getting a picture, the actual physical picture, that's always a, a great thing because once you put that, picture in an album or however you're you're going to store it so you can do it you'll you'll have the the information from the back side of it um, record it as an easy reference um, so you take the picture of the front and then flip it over and take it in the back and you, you know that's the, the back for the photo that went before um, yeah so you want to start with those basic you you want to maybe look at getting a a, some software to enter that information in and really uh, it, it can all depend it can be as complex as 
um, a, a program dedicated to family tree building, you can start it with a spreadsheet by just basically building out your a spreadsheet. Um, you can, if you know how to use a spreadsheet, you can set up um, tabs for the, the family and, and, and family members and put all the information on each person on a separate tab, but then have a, a main a main pick a uh, main um a main page that or of the document that has all those extra type things um where you're sort of have the formal family tree of the the relationships because uh, a spreadsheet is a great way because you can just create a separate tab and you want to record everything about the person you that you get you can start doing that so you have it um, though I do recommend using software just because there's so many wonderful things you can do um, with it. Um, so once you've kind of gathered that information and you're, you've gotten all the information you can out of uh, your, your, your living ancestors, you want to start finding the, the records to, to prove that or to build upon to go backwards farther. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you a, an example here and I'm, I'm going to speak from what I know and what has worked, uh, for me when I'm looking at things. Um, so I'm going to share here and people that have been on live before and, and watch my videos know, uh, like I said, I have a lot of family back. In fact, all my family is from Nova Scotia. Um, they came to, from Ireland or Scotland to Nova Scotia at some point. And so I, I wind up using the Nova Scotia archives quite a bit because it's a really good source and it's got great information. But you can do this whether they're from Nova Scotia, from Idaho, from, from Australia or whatever, if you find these type of, uh, of resources. Um, so one of the things you really need to do is just be aware of the the areas that you're talking to about your and your ancestors and you want to start knowing what sort of the what sort of things are available to you um if you're from canada i have a great actually resource guide that is a constant work in progress um for canada in different regions um but you start building using that using other guides that are there because um, there's people far better than me, far better than you that have done a lot of this stuff and might not be searching this specific ancestor, but they, they've they um, learned the rules and stuff around records or what sources are out there. Um, but one of the first things you want to do is when you're starting to look at those, um, those regions, you want to sort of know what records are there so, so you know where, where to look. Um, so I'm just going to present here. So this is the Nova Scotia archives. And often in any region, when you find out, you'll find out what records they have available. And again, a lot of this has to do with privacy. Um, general rule of thumb is the, the most, um, most records are trying to be kept at um the, the person would most likely not be living um if these records were made public um so in nova scotia it sort of gives you what records they have and the, the dates um even breaks it, it it breaks it down here and get at the bottom it also gives a little bit more information here about sorry on the bottom it tells you if you if you're looking for records that aren't in the public, what to do. They usually have something like that because often people are looking for a birth certificate, um, a birth certificate for a person that is still living or that's after this time frame. But we're gonna stick with knowing sort of what's there available and easy to access. Go and you look at your, what re your region's getting to know those. So I know that if I'm looking for somebody from birth records, what I may find here on the Nova Scotia archives, um, what marriage records are and in death records. Um, again, it, 
it, it's just very helpful to get to know that. So you want to start with the oldest, the oldest person. So um, I mentioned uh, a grandparent. So if you're looking at a grandparent, you might find when they were married, um, depending on their age, um, that might be one of the first records that you have available or possibly their parents' deaf, um, deaf registration. So I'm going to tell you, show you sort of things that you can find on these things. Um, and again, records vary a little different from um, periods that they were done in also um, regions. They'll have some differences, but often it's, it's very much it's the same information or very similar. So I'm going to search a couple things that I know here. I'm, I have my, my, my grandmother whose last name was McKinnon when she was born and she went by um, Charlotte, but she was known as Florence. So I'm just going to actually, I'm going to look here for uh, flow star and see what I find. Okay. So she is actually in, in Charlotte Florence. Um, and she might be there as McKinnon or McKinnon. Uh, I can't remember in these particular records. Okay, there. So I have her here, Charlotte Florence McKinnon. So I have her and I have her marriage records. So let's say the marriage records, what you have. So it tells you a lot of different things here. Um, so it tells me the details around the marriage, but also tells me the details around the people that are getting married. Uh, for instance, I have my my grandfather, his place of birth, um, his father's name, uh, and his father's place of birth, and his um, mother with her maiden name. So that gives you a lot of information you may not, may or may not already have. Um, <clears throat> and it, likewise, it does the same thing for the... Um, for the the brides the the, the bride side um, important thing here too is it will have um, and I find that this is the the bias of especially older records it will have some uh, it, it might not have as much detail on the mother but when you have things that has the maiden name that is excellent because often you'll look at records and you won't get that maiden name uh, even marriage records sometimes will just have the first and last name. Uh, the same last names would be, um, in this case, her mother's name was Catherine. So we just have Catherine McKinnon, but it has her with her maiden name here. This is McGinnis, if you can't make it out, because um, it, it's not the clearest. Um, you do find you, you get to be, <laughs> to recognize different types of writing styles as you get, get more into looking at records. Um, gives me a little bit of information here. It says my grandmother was a stenographer and she worked, her industry was in education. So she was a secretary at a school at this point. Um, so, um, tells me that he's a bachelor um, it also tells me he's a gunner for the Royal Can Canadian Army because um, this happened during World War II and he got actually married the day before they shipped out. He shipped out overseas. He got married um, after his basic training when he was in Halifax and he shipped out the next day. So that gives me some information. I have known that story from my parents and my grandparents that he they got married um, and it was the day or the day after that he was shipped out. So that gives me a time frame, even to find um, for my, my grandfather's service records. So there's things that are hidden in these things combined with information you might hear from your family. You can start to uh, start to dig in and get a little bit more. Um, so this is an example of a marriage record. This is very common. Um, it's very common. It has this similar information. Again, it can be laid out differently. Um, and a lot of older records, they're more in a, a book. Often it's in a book that's a registration that's specific to the church or the community. Um, I'll show you one of those in a minute. Um, but I'm going to show you the other records that you can find. So 
and deaf records. I know her, my grand, my grandmother's um, father and my grandfather's father both died before. Um, again, if I went back here, you, you'll see that you, the um, deaf records up until 1972 are here. So I know they both died before then. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to search for her father. Um, and he, he died in 1960, I believe. So I'm going to search just for, um, death. And I, I could actually narrow it down again. This is, this is helpful. You can do the, 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 the range. Um, you can do the, the region. I could specifically, I knew the place. Um, but if I kn knew that he, he died, I'd, like, and I didn't know the exact, the exact community. Um, and again, because some of that may change, he might have died in a hospital. Um, so I, I'm going to start with actually narrowing it down. He should be in Cape Breton County. And I know he is because I found this record before. But um, so I'm going to just tell it I want to just look at deaths. And I know he died in 1960. But if I didn't know that, I, I could start searching. So I could go, I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to find J. L. McKinnon. I know that his name was John. And if I actually went and I had my grandmother's record, I would have noticed that as well. So um, by looking at his death registration, and again, this is different depending on the, the things, um, find all kinds of things. I've He's a retired salesman. His age um, is 81. His birth date was not known, but it was 1879. Um, so um, the reason is death registrations are usually done from an informant, depending on who that person is. They may or may not know all the information, um, but it does know. tell me some things. So it tells me his wife's name. Uh, it tells me the last time he worked in this occupation in 1947. So he was retired for 13 years. So he was retired at age 68. Um, could be 67, depending on um, exactly. But he last worked in 1947. Um, now I'm looking at this. This is actually my grandfather, my grandmother's husband's, um, who was the informant. That's why he may not have all the details um, there exactly, but he does have that information. He does know that his father's name was also John McKinnon, and he was born in Cape Breton. Does not have any more details than that. But we have his mother uh, with her maiden name, Charlotte Campbell. Um, you'll notice my grandmother's name was Charlotte. She was named after her grandmother, who was also a Charlotte. So we know Charlotte, and we know that she was born in Cape Breton. Doesn't have birth dates of the parents there, but but that's okay. Um, we're gonna look at finding those elsewhere. So we got that information. I have two pieces of information I may not have had uh, before because I was able to find a, a deaf record. So with that information, I'm now equipped to move on, and I could move back to the the next. Um, the next stage, I'm, there's a couple things that I might want to do. Uh, I might want to, um, look at my, my great grandfather and his wife and see if I can find a marriage record of them. So, um, I can, I can do that actually, if I search here and I'm just going to go back. So I know John L. McKinnon and I'm not, I had to just search for deaths and I'm going to search for marriages. Um, so they would have been married. My grandmother was born in 1922. So they would have been born married before 1922. And I, again, would assume in Cape Breton County, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually going to clear that. I mean, the reason why, um, I, I say I'm clearing it and not going to have the county because, um, he was not from Cape Breton County. He was from Inverness County, which is a neighboring county in on the island of Cape Breton, not to be 
confused. Um, so I'm going to search for John McKinnon there, uh, and I'm not going to have a county name because it could be Inverness, it could be Cape Breton, or as we, I saw with my, my grandparents, who both were from Cape Breton County, they got married in Halifax. Um, so I'm looking, going to look for a, a John McKinnon married to a Catherine McGinnis. Um, so when I search that, I'm just going to start by searching for marriage. <clears throat> so this actually lets me, if I want to search a specific record here, um, so I can I can do Catherine uh, and I can do her McGinnis and I can do John and I'm going to start and the reason I'm, I'm saying this um, is because with Max and Mix they're often they're often um, they're often mixed mixed up and transposed and that just comes from experience uh, I've because I've been able to find records for these families sometimes under Mick sometimes under Mac I, even once I found some records uh, for them for them as um, for one of the families and it was a census record and everybody that had them a Scottish name a Mick or a Mac their name was written as um, in this case would McKinnon and then apostrophe MC. Um, so McDonald would be Donald apostrophe MC. Uh, so I, I just know what I'm, I'm sort of looking here. I know my limitations. Um, so I, I'm searching here. I'm going to search up until 1923 because I'm just searching for a marriage record. I don't know where they were born. See, this is now I'm not finding anything. Uh, will let me use the star. Um, okay. And I'm going to put um, So we have a, a Mary McGinnis and a John A. McKinnon in 1932. Uh, interesting enough, it didn't really take my date here. Um, again, it's sort of it's kind of a range it's looking at. So I'm going to search for um, Mick Innes. Um, you can choose exactly. So uh, okay, and I'm going to choose Mick Kinnon this way. So I'm looking here, don't have, this would be not be right because um, my grandmother, great grandmother would only been a child when that was done. Uh, again, wrong names. And I've actually know from past, I'm not going to find it there. I cannot find their record. Now, interestingly enough, I can find, um, Remember, we have Charlotte Campbell. Um, and I can't remember in this one if it's showing. There we go. Charlotte McCann Campbell and John McKinnon. And this is an example of an older record. As I said, it was recorded in a record book. So, um, so this here is really great it tells me the page I'm looking at and I'm should be looking for record 14 so what I have here is I have um, John McKinnon Charlotte Campbell I have some information and this is really really quite interesting um, I just want to show you here, and I've, I did this actually in another video I had showed. There's a mistake, and I've actually been able to find a, a second copy of this record elsewhere in the Nova Scotia that has this retranscribed properly. Um, 
as you'll notice, it has the same names from the mother and father. They were not brother and sister. This is actually the name up here. Um, so it has uh, Lachlan and Catherine um, McKinnon and Farquhar and Catherine Campbell. Um, as you'll see here, that like I said, that's duplicated. I'm not positive if um, if this is the exact um, information that I need on the parents where they're born, but I do know this is from my own records, the correct information. So with that, um, I I know a little bit about them. Um, I can I can then get another step backwards on both lines because I know too, I can find out their parents' names. Um, and then I can start searching for things like in the census to find um, my Farquhar and, and Catherine Campbell to, um, to see if they're, um, if they're occurring anywhere in the census. And I, I could then find more information as well. Um, now I'm, Farquhar Campbell, you think that would be a very unique name. Um, so let's see, that might be my next bet if I'm going to search in here and see what I can find. So I'm going to go back to my my main page here and I'm going to do look for Farquhar Campbell. I'm not finding anything. Um, I'm going to look for Charlotte Campbell, his daughter, and let's see what I can find on her. <clears throat> so I found her marriage record, as I showed you before, um, which is this one here. Let's look at deaths. So I have a Charlotte Campbell, but at this point, she wouldn't be in Charlotte Campbell. She would have been Charlotte McKinnon. Um so I, it would have her under her, who knew her new name. So, but let's look for births. So I have a Charlotte Campbell and the earliest one I have is 1871. And guess what? Since she was married in 1867, it's not the same person. Uh, again, you, you sort of, <laughs> that one's an obvious thing, but you, uh, if there was a record and I found somebody that could be a probable because of the age, I'd be able to then compare and see if the father um, and mother's names match up with what's in the marriage and be able to tell if they're the right person. So I'm going to actually look now for her since she was um, married. I'm going to look for her, her death record. Um, you'll see they still show up there. So I'm going to search for deaths. So I have Charlotte McKinnon in Malaga Watch, Inverness. I don't know if you noticed in the marriage um, registration, that's where um, her husband had been living. Um, so pretty sure this is probably going to be the right person. In 1931, so that would have been, she would have, she would definitely, the, the suits is the proper person, but let's just see what we find. So we find her death registration. Now this is um, this is really interesting. So again, if you noticed in the marriage, it had her father's name is Farquhar. As you can imagine, even in uh, the early 20th century, you probably weren't going around being called Farquhar. Um, so I, I can see quickly that her father's name was Frank. Now it says the birthplace of her father was Nova Scotia. It also has her mother there as Katie Campbell, um, born in Nova Scotia. And it has the informant's name is Dan J. McKinnon. And it's tell me that's her son. So this would be a brother of my Great grandfather, so he'd be my great grand uncle, um, Daniel J. McKinnon. Um, there's a couple things here that 
Unfortunately, I know this isn't right because on her marriage, which would have been done at the time of marriage, she did have a different maiden name for her um, for her mother. Her, her name was Catherine. Um, and so I know that her name wasn't also um, Campbell. But let's look at this. She was 84. Uh, she was farmer's wife. Um, and there should be a spot, I thought, in here. She's female. She's Scott. She's a widower. She was born in 1847. No date of birth. Uh, has her date of death. All that information. I'm not getting any more information here that I didn't already have. In fact, this might look like it's muddying the water because of this. Um, it's just knowing that this is... N knowing that Farquhar would be commonly done as um, Frank. Just just the same as you might find a, a a William being listed as a Bill, the more familiar name. Um, same as Catherine being listed as Kate or Katie. Um, so don't let those things throw you off. Um, I know this is the right record. I doesn't have her mother's maiden name there. So kind of disappointed when you search that and you find it. But if you, again, go back, I know it's here. When I look at the marriage and I view that, it tells me a little bit about uh, her again. So I'm on line 14. Remember on the death certificate, it said that her father was born in um, born in Nova Scotia. Um, so doesn't have her parents place of birth in this one. So I'm still looking Farquhar Campbell. So I've I've learned a couple things. I know that she had a son named Daniel J. Um, I also know that her uh, father's Farquhar, his, her mother's uh, Catherine. And again, yeah, it didn't have, sorry, you have the, her mother's maiden name. It's a says Catherine Campbell as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know her mother's maiden name yet. Uh, I'm assuming it's not Campbell. That's correct. There's another one I was thinking that has something different, but I'm assuming it's not Campbell. Um, not that it's not improbable, but I, I'm assuming that's not at this point I would, but I've, I've been able to build back now to, um, so I, I built from my searching for my grandmother. I went to her father, to his mother, to um, the next generation back. So we're, so we're looking at my grandmother, which is already two generations um, from, from me. Um, actually, it's technically the third generation. Um, her father, which is the fourth, her father's mother, which is the fifth, and her um, father's mother, so her grandmother's father. So we're looking back six generations. It didn't take that long, but once I had that information there. So we, you really, there's really an advantage to starting and, and, and looking at that information. And that will lead, as, as you noticed here, and I did it very quickly, and part of it is because I know what I'm looking for and um but you'll 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 actually be able to get a lot of that information very quickly uh, which is a real positive when you're first starting to do your family tree um i'm going to take you on a, a a different little bit of different journey though just because we're uh, this was on her my grandmother's father's side of the family so i'm going to do the same sort of thing and show you some of the pitfalls um, when you're doing this. So I know that um, my grandmother's mother's name was Catherine McInnes. I'm going to tell you a little bit that I do know, um, and this is because th this the personal information I went in at the beginning knowing. Um, I know that her name was Catherine. Uh, um, she was referred to as Kay. Her, she had a sister named Florence. I didn't know any of the siblings' names, other siblings' names, um, and I didn't know my great-grandmother's parents' names. So 
again, I was able to find that pretty quick with my great grandfather. Let's look at my great grandmother. And this is where you, you'll sometimes have to, to do things a little differently and why you can you use other sources to try to fill in information when you can't find it. So we're going to go with, again, I'm going to go with K-A and I'm going to go with McInnes. Um, so it's not finding anything. Um, starts with, there we go. So we have uh, some things here for Catherine McGinnis. <clears throat> this Catherine McGinnis, she died in my lifetime. She died in 19, um, I saw her in 1979. I think she died the next year in 1980. Um, might be 81 um, without looking. I Again, I'm trying to go from the things I, I knew at the time when I first started looking. Um, now, I know f f uh, that my, my grandmother was born in 1922. So usually women in that period would be, and my grandmother is the oldest, uh, would usually start getting married um, in their early 20s and having children. Um, I know that her husband was a, a little bit older. Um, so there's a couple things. I won't be able to find my grandmother's death certificate on, on these public records. Um, I won't. So that, that gets me uh, a step. So I can't find her parents' names from... A, a death registration or a death certificate. I will not. Um, I will not be able. To, I, as I, I had already looked for, I was not able to find her. Um, her marriage. I'm. So when I, I'm looking here, and I can switch to marriages. Um, as you can see, I the only McGinnis here that anybody with CA is somebody married to Calvin. So that's the the male name starting there. So. She's not there. I'm not searching any particular county. Um, she didn't marry a Calvin Harris, and her name wasn't Mary. So, again, I know that's not her. <clears throat> it is quite possible she was. They were married outside of uh, Nova Scotia, um, but I, I have no reason to believe that. And at this point, um, nor do I have any. Um, Nothing from my personal experience would have said that, that that they were married outside of Nova Scotia. Again, it's quite possible. Um, in this case, I'm kind of assuming that the marriage record was lost. I might be able to find it on a, a church record. Um, to find the church records, I'd actually need to go to the archives, and that's, again, you get yourself familiar with what's there. I might be able to, to find it by searching through their old microfiche and finding the the potential churches where they would have been married. Um, so I want to find out a little bit of more information that I might have on her. <clears throat> so I know that she had a sister named Florence. So I'm going to search for her sister. And if her sister was alive in my lifetime, um, she died, I want to say, after 19, um, after 1987, actually. Um, and she was 100 plus at that point. She was born in the late 1890s, as was my grandmother, great-grandmother. So uh, I'm going to search for her, her, again, her death certificate there. She was a spinster. Um, so I... I won't find a marriage record, but maybe, just maybe there's a, a record somewhere uh, of her birth. So there's certain things that I'm going to rule out right away. I'm going to rule out um, dates. Again here, let's look for just birth, so I'm narrowing it down. Um, 
I'm looking for anything really after the the nineteen the nineteen hundreds, uh, eighteen ninety. Sorry. So, and my uh, I know the family live in Inverness County. That's where again I would expect to find them. Um, so do I see anything there that is a possibility? I'm not seeing anything really as a possibility. This is the right community. Um, this could be her. I, I know it's not. This could be her. No, because I know she was older and, um, well, it could be, I do really, like I said, I suspect that she was born in the late 1800s. But let's just quickly look. So this is an application for registration of birth. So let's see what we have. Um, so I'm not finding anything here. Um, so I'm going to go to a different resource. I'm going to use the Canadian census. Um, now on my, my guide, I would have this, so I have to link right to it just for easy sake. Cause I'm going to search in Google. I want to find, so I know that in, um, 1921, my great grandmother could possibly be married that at that point, um, or she could be by her maiden name. So I'm not going to. I'm going to look actually in the the census, the two census, the two or three census is before, and I'm going to look for her in um, with her maiden name. So I'm going to do. Because I've had different things that she's either Catherine or Kathleen. Um, and I've had seen it spelled with both the K and the C. So, so I'm not going to put an age of birth because at this point I have nothing to indicate what the actual is. Uh, I know I'm looking for a female. And I know I'm looking for uh, in Nova Scotia. Now, in place, I can narrow it down. Um, I'm going to narrow this down, and I'm going to search for. Um, I'm going to search for Inverness for the district. I'm going to see what comes up. So I have a 1901. It lists her as being two years old. So this is possible for her. That I'm I mean, she was born in 1899, um, which would mean that when she died, she was in her um, mid 80s. It's pr approximately the the right time. Um, West Bay and Inverness County. That's definitely looks as a possibility. This person's way off. This person's way off. This is a possibility. Um, and again, so, so no, I'm looking for, so there we go. We have in, um, 1911, somebody that's 18 years old. Um, so if that's the case. That would have mean she was born around 1893. Um, approximately um, 1894. That's that's a, a good possibility there. Um, just knowing, you know, looking at even the age of my grandfather's mother, so it would be her contemporary in a way, um, was born in 1892. So that looks about right. That could very well be her, um, which means I, with this one or the other one, I'm not going to find her in the 1891 census, so I'm looking at the 1901 or the 
1911. Um, 1901, 21, this is, this is out. Again, 17 and 1901 is a little, little too old. Uh, 1891 being four years old, I'm going to say it's too old. This, the, you know, just looking realistically. Um, it is possible that it's her, but I, I'm going to go with that. It's, it's too old. She wasn't born in 1887. Um, again, here, this could be a possibility if she's born in 1899, 18, this here, um, very much could be the same person as in this 1901 um, up here where I had a person that was, um, I think it was 1901. So let's, we're going to look, and we're going to look for a couple things. We're going to look to see if we have somebody with the name Florence. Um, so there's two pages. And with these two pages, it will kind of narrow things down for me. So this person of three months in 1891 very well could be them. Um, so I'm going to take a couple little pieces at things. And I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to modify my search. And I'm going to put a, a year of birth of 1897. And I'm going to set a range. I'm going to set a fairly broad range of five years. So this could be 1892. Uh, actually, I'm going to go, let's go to 1901. This is going to be my range. And then I'm going to search just to narrow it down a little more. So I'm down to six possible records. Um, two in 1901 here, 1911, 1911, uh, 1891. That really... Uh, with my range shouldn't be there. I guess it could just because it's just four months. So let's look at the the the, the first one here. I'm going to search is this one that was 1901, two years old. Now the great thing about the Canadian census, it tells you a lot of information if you're looking at the whole thing. Um, so if I'm looking at her there, I'm gonna click on the record and it's gonna tell me that 1891, this is again the one that's three months. I'm gonna see if this is a possibility to be her. Um, so it tells me I'm looking for family 14. So the way the Canadian census goes, they have family numbers they also have building numbers sometimes um, depending on the lot so i'm looking for family 14. so here i have a margaret mckinnon who is the head of household who's widowed um she has son donald then she had these she had a daughter who was um three and a half I don't see a Florence on here, Flora or Flo. So I know this is one that is not the person I'm looking for. Um, so that means in um, 1901, I might have her as being um, 10 or 11. So let's, let's see. 1901, two years old. So let's look here. So this is telling me it's West Bay, and this is um, family number 19. Again, when I look at the families, I'm looking for. So I have a John McGinnis. Uh, Captain John McGinnis. Um, I have Mary McGinnis. I have Alex. I have Catherine. Euphrenia and Robert. Still no floor, flow or flora. So I'm I'm thinking that's um, not not the person I'm looking for. 
though that'd be great um, if I could find the 1901 census. 1901 census is really good because it has some details there. So I'm going to look at the next one. Is this 1901 census where they're seven years old and So I'm looking here, they are a family number 45. So when we look here, so we have family 45. There we go. Look at this. So we have Charles, we have Katie, we have Flora. And we have Catherine. And lo and behold, what do we have? We have a son named Dan, born 1900. So he was very young. Uh, I have her born in 1893. Again, that's the range I'm looking for. And I have um, her sister born in 1889. Again, I said she was 100 or close. I thought she was just over 100. She might have been just before 100. Um, when she died, and I know she died after 1986 for sure. I want to say sometime in 1987. So this very much might be might be the person I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna go to my family research books for this particular family. Well, actually, down here I need them. So here's my one for my grandmother. And in here, I also have um, so this is my grandmother or grandmother. This is my grandmother. Um, again, in my research, I have sort of the, a very simple page of resources for Nova Scotia for specific things. That, so I have an easy reference. So I would take this if I was going somewhere and I didn't have my computer or if I'm just looking for things. Um, so I, I'm uh, going to look through here and I have a lot of interesting things on here that would tell me um, in this book here too, um, because it's a Scottish family, I have um, my naming patterns for um, Scottish families because it is something that was very much done um, in here. It says the 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 first the first daughter was usually named after the maternal grandmother. Um, then the second daughter named after the the paternal, and the third one named after the mother. So let's look here. I have Flora, who's the first daughter. Um, born 18, 1889. So if she's the first daughter, she's named after the maternal grandmother. Um, so that means that she was named after her mother, Katie's um, mother. And now the second daughter, which is Catherine, is named after the paternal grandmother, so after the father's mother. Great thing to know because when I go searching for other records, it gives me some clues to, to see if I'm finding possibly the same people. Uh, it, the, again, you can't hold that as an absolute rule, but it you can hold it as a as a possibility when you're looking. Um, now, I just wanted to show you when we were looking at that census record. Um, sorry, so we're looking here, we have Dan or Don, um, and I have this picture in my, my grandmother's writing, it's grandfather, uncle Don. So this picture was taken in, um, I did have somewhere when it was. Um, 
and it, so this is my my um, grandmother's grandfather. And guess what? I'm finding Donald on there, and I'm finding her grandfather. Um, his name's Charles, which is what I have in my other research. I have confirmed that her grandfather's name was Charles McGinnis. So I know that this is the family I'm looking for. Um, again, the 1901 census. Again, that is a, probably one of the better ones because it has a lot of information. Um, so, so if I'm looking here, it doesn't just have her year of birth. It actually has her day of birth. Um, now, this is a, a point of contention with Scottish people. It's listed here as her, um, if I backed up here and we saw what the headings are. So if we looked here, it's um, racial or tribal origin. I, I find it really interesting that it has that. Um, but um, I just want to show you this with not just her, but everybody here. It's not Scottish. It's not Scott. It's Scotch. It's not really a term people would use today. Um, they're all Canadian here. Um, so these are people that are multiple um, generation Canadians. Uh, this whole community, at least on this page. And then it, it's very similar if I go back the page or two before and after. Um, Sorry, I'm just here. I'm bringing you back where I'm at. So, um, and this is your father's origin. Uh, and the, the religion, sorry, Presbyterian. So, uh, that's correct. Yeah, that's the religion. So you'll notice here again, Everybody's Presbyterian. Profession, and now, um, living on your own means, this means, are they being supported by somebody else, their, their employer, um, working on their own, got a, lots of information here, but there's a couple other things here. It has a great section on education. Um, so if there's a student is asked how how many months a year are they at school? Um, can they read? Can they write? Can they speak English? And can they speak French? And this is a really interesting one. Mother language, mother tongue if spoken. So this would be their their first language is your mother tongue. And then it has a section about infirmities. So I'm going to go back down to my her whole family there. just because it's, I find this very interesting. Um, so you see that they are all born in Nova Scotia, their parents, because um, again, this is the, the line I'm looking at. I'm looking between those two dark lines and the, actually the one above it. So basically there to down here. So I'm just gonna, from this line down and including the bottom one. So, <laughs> You're going to notice the the, the sun is only um, four. Um, four months old, I think it says. So he's born in the end. Now he's the only one that doesn't have a mother tongue. But I want you to look. Gaelic. So... It listed here they can speak English. Uh, so she, she was in school for four months. Um, her and her sister both, but their mother tongue is Gaelic. They speak and they read and they speak English. Um, and they were able to write in English. Uh, the whole family there, it seems like they're um, literate. 
at least as far as this is concerned, they read and they write in um, English. But I really a couple things that are, are helpful. Um, one, knowing that Gaelic was their mother tongue, and I, this is actually really interesting. Um, almost everybody on this page Gaelic's the mother tongue. Now, the few that aren't, um, we're looking at people because it asks if they speak it. They're uh, they're too young to really be speaking a language um, that you would say. So I I find that very fascinating. Um, that and along with the religion tells me a lot of things, tells me places where I can be looking for other records. So I'd be looking at Presbyterian churches um, and specifically Gaelic speaking Presbyterian churches. Um, it's often interesting to take a look when you're looking at, um, when you're looking at um, people in the census to take a look at the, the people around them because often they, you have brothers and sisters and um, other family members that might be there. As you see, there's a lot of McGinnises there. Um, so it gives me some information when I'm, I'm searching. I, again, you, you, you may or may not, depending what you're, you're looking for, you've already found out, be looking for some information as far as common names. So again, one of the interesting things here is um, we have this one that says Flossie, Flossie McGinnis. Um, so that could be variation of, of flow for sure. Um, and we have Roderick McGinnis. So if I'm looking at Charles McGinnis now, knowing the, the Scottish namings, I don't know what place he is in the brother, so I can't really um, go and say if he's the first, firstborn, secondborn, or thirdborn. He may or may not mean him after his father. Um, so you can start to search there. But I definitely found some interesting things. So I found, um, I found the her parents. Um, so I have her father is Charles McGinnis. So I'm going to go back to Nova Scotia. And I'm going to go back to my, my search here. And I'm going to search for Charles McGinnis. So this is how a way to quickly break down um, when you can't find records. Go to the census and see what you find. So I have a Charles McGinnis. Um, and if I look here, since it gave me his date of birth of March 30th, 1868. So let's see if I have anybody March 30th, 1868. I, the earliest one I have there is 1867. The next ones are in 1874 in Inverness. This possibly be, could be him, but I can't see at that point at 33 mistaking your your birth um, that drastically but let's look at marriages so if he would have been born in um sorry born in 1868 his wife was born in 1870 um their earliest child was born in 1889 i'm looking probably between 18 86 and 1889 for a marriage date, most likely 1888. Um, so let's look for a marriage. And I know that the mother's name was um, Katie. So I'm looking for Catherine, Kathleen. So let's look for a Charles and a Catherine or Kathleen. Uh, so I can, I can actually search specifically with the groom's name. Um, so I'm going to look for Charles Oops. Um, 
and I'm going to have starts with K.A. I don't know her maiden name because you can't find that out in the census. Um, so I'm not finding her there. Let's search for Charles Mac Innes just to, again, see what I find. So I'm not finding anything there. So I'm going to remove the... Um, the bride's first or last name because a couple reasons. Um, Katie could be a middle name. Um, so, um, so we have 1878. Again, I, I very much doubt that's it because that seems way, way too soon. Though I do have the Catherine E and Charles. Um, but considering she was born in 1870, um, this would make her eight, eight years old. And though some cultures might have child brides, Scottish people living in Cape Breton in the 1800s generally frowned upon it. So I know I'm not going to find any record there. But let's let's go back. And I'm going to go back to when I was searching here. Um, sorry. When I had the different records, I'm going to look for a deaf record. So I have Charles McGinnis. Um, so I know that he, based on a couple of things, he was living in 1901. So I know he died after 1901. Um, so I'm looking for definitely somebody after 1901. I'm going to assume most likely in Inverness County still. Um, not necessarily, but most likely. Um, it's possible he moved to Glace Bay because um, I know my family did live there and they came from there. So I'm I'm looking anything after um, 1901. So I'm I have a couple that are possibilities. So I have this one here. I have Charles McGinnis and Charles J. McGinnis in Glace Bay and Charles McGinnis in Sydney. Uh, so these are the three that I'm going to look at. Could be him as well. Um, died in 1846. So we're going to start go with the, the 1926. If he was born in um, 1868. So that would make him about 50. Uh, 1926 and 26, 32. You're looking at um, he's... 26 and 32, sorry, it's 58 years old. That wouldn't be unheard of. Um, chances are it's one of these two. Uh, so let's let's go and actually let's start with the oldest. Now, the information here that I'm looking for, um, let's see who filled this in. So the informant's name is Mrs. Um, something O'Hanley uh, of Dorchester, Massachusetts, and a daughter. So Isabel. So I don't have an Isabel that's a daughter that was alive in 1901 census anyways. So I'm going to say this is not him. Uh, could be because maybe uh, I, I just didn't find that. But let's let's go to our next one which is Charles J. McGinnis in 1932. So, re relationship to the deceased. So this was filled up by this person's wife. So, Mrs. Charles McGinnis. Now, isn't that helpful? Um, but a couple of things here is so we have June nineteenth, eighteen sixty nine. So March thirtieth. 
Um, I could see getting the year wrong. The date, not likely, and it's not a close one. So chances are that this, again, is not him. But let's just see. It just has his birth date is Nova Scotia. Uh, things that make me think that it, that I, I don't want to rule this out completely as quickly. There's a couple pointers here. Um, it does point out that both his parents were born in Nova Scotia, um, which it does say that his father was born in Nova Scotia here. Um, in this section here. Um, country and place of birth. Um, year of immigration, racial origin. Actually, so this one doesn't have the where your parents were born. Um, so, um, so I'm looking here, still looking at March 30th, 1868. So let's go back, and we have the other one that's a possibility. Uh, were these two. Name of father, Dan McGinnis. Main name of mother, Flora McKinnon. It's interesting, another uh, McKinnon. Um, so, the informer's name, Mrs. William Lang, daughter. Well, this here tells me that this is Holy Cross, um, is what it looks like. That's a Catholic cemetery. Um, so I, I'm saying that's probably not him. Uh, that's William Lang, the one I looked at, sorry. Um, let's look at Dominion. Same one, William Lang, William Lang. It's the same birth date, Charles McGinnis. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the same person. Um, so I'm I'm pretty sure there is the possibility that, again that it's this Charles McGinnis here in 1909. So we have Charles McGinnis. So he is 60 years old in 1909. So that would have meant he was born 1849. So we know this is not the, the correct person. So at this point, again, we're kind of stuck. We don't have an accurate Charles McGinnis, anything about him. But we know his wife's name. Let's see what we can find about his wife. His wife's name is Katie. So let's look up Katie McGinnis. Um, and I'm going to put... Because um, she could be as Catherine. She could actually be Catherine with a C as well. Let's remember that. Um, So, if I search quickly in marriages, I'm not finding anything. I didn't expect because I already searched with him. But let's look at deaths. So, I have some possibilities here. I have this one that's Katie McGinnis. K-A-T-I-E. And Sydney River, Cape Breton County. So, let's see what I find out. So this here, she was 54 years old. Uh, if married name, if married, give name of wife or husband of deceased. So there's no husband or wife. She was 50 years old, born 1883. I'm looking at the wrong person. Um, So 
So f- January 24th, 1871. So we have, this looks to me like June 28th, 1870. That's not the one I just looked at. Okay. So we have Kate McGinnis. So when we look here, what options do we have here? If married, give name of husband and where born. So East Bay, John McGinnis. That's not the person we're looking for because her husband's name was not John. So it's really getting us down that we could be here. Actually, this is the one I just looked at, I believe. Yeah. Um, It, it's kind of leaving you when you're looking at it, finding it not, not some, not somebody um, there that you can find easily. Um, January 24th, 1871. That was that one. Eighteen eighty three. Now we're gonna do one last search. A couple actually gonna do a couple of last searches. I'm gonna search with a C again because Catherine could be spelled that way. And we're looking at deaths. We're not gonna look at her births because her name was not McGinnis, most likely when she was born. We know we're looking after um nineteen oh one because she was in the nineteen oh one census and nineteen oh one she lived in Inverness. So chances are she's still living in Inverness and the, the specific place that she lived in Inverness. Um, Inhabitants River, which is Riviere Inhabital, I believe that's not it's not called that. Um, but it's in Inverness County. So let's let's look at all our possibilities. We have anything after 1901, and I'm looking for Cape Breton or Inverness County. So we're going to go from the oldest and we're going to be realistic as she was born in 1870. Um, we're not looking anything probably here. Could be as um, recent as 1961. My, my mother doesn't recall her. Uh, this would be her great grandmother living in her lifetime. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really saying this is probably not it. Um, but let, let's just check. Um, so so when we look at here, so we have January 1st, 1873. So we have 1870, and this is a 28, possibly a 25, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that looks like June. So we're not not the right person. Uh, 1941. So we have Josephine, who's a daughter. Um, burial place, a big pond. Married uh, name of husband Martin, and he's deceased, so that's not the the person. Um, so we'll look at. Let's look again. I'm gonna s- just stick with Inverness to start with. Nineteen 
If Mary John Allen McGinnis, yeah, date of birth 1907, so way off. Um, Nineteen twenty-five. So eighteen forty-seven. She was born before then. So let's now skip the here. We're going to go to um, these few here again. Looking for date of birth nineteen forty. That's the wrong person. Um, 1837, 1907, that's the one I looked at, Inverness, um, North Sydney. Now, my grandmother was born in um, 1854, that's wrong, my, in Sydney, or Sydney River, I believe. Um, Richmond County is near Inverness, but I want to say we're not looking there. So we're, yeah, 64 years old. Name of father, name of um, this one here doesn't have the name of spouse. Um, just has they were born in West Bay. So there's 64 years and nine months. So she was born in 1870. We'd be looking at 55 years or 54 years and nine months. So this is 10 years too old. Now, let's also search Mac. And we're looking for deaths. Again, we're looking after 1901. And we're looking before. And let's actually, let's really narrow it down to Inverness County here. Let's make it easier. Malaga Watch. Now that's a name that keeps coming up, but that's 1867. Um, she wasn't born to 1870. Um, she was alive in 1901. So we know we're looking at least after 1901. That could be as early as in 1907. Um, so actually, sorry, I'm looking at deaths. I'm, I wanted to look at deaths. I didn't narrow it down. So we have these three places now she lived in west bay according to a census in um this 1901 census so let's see if we have here november 15th 1867 again there's not a lot of information about her it doesn't have a, a lot. It has her son, um, Dan McGinnis, which is the name of the son that looks like there. So it's possible he doesn't know. Um, honestly, I wanted to say though, if this is the correct record, it's not of a lot of help because there's no parents' names here, parents' birthplace, because that's what we want really by looking at these records. Um, so she, this was a school teacher. Now she wasn't listed with any occupation. She was 21 years of age. And that's so we know that's not her. Again, I don't think this would be her just because my, my mother never mentioned, um, her great grandmother being alive. Um, but let's just see what we have here. Birthplace Marguerite, 
1866, June 12th. If Mary Lachlan McGinnis and nothing there. Um, I'm going to say 1864. I would very, very doubt it. So we have a December 12, 1884. Very too young. Um, school teacher, I looked at her already. Um, So this, this one's eight years, so this is not the person I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm not finding anything there that looks right. Um... So we have Katie and Kat here. Let me get it spelled out that way. Name of father. So she's 61 in 1931. So that would mean she's born 1870. So we have a John McGinnis saying that John D. McGinnis saying that son. I really, this is where you, you really have, these are brick walls that, you know, you'd love to be able to, to find quicker. Um, this is interesting. Um, a female undertaker. Married name, uh, if she's the wife, Dan McGinnis. Eighteen sixty-two. So I'm not having much luck there. I am thinking that um, this one here. Um, the, the one that I said wasn't very useful. Um, this one here, because it didn't have any information. Um, was it this one? November 15th, 1867. Um, no, it's, it's not. Even if I... Again, I if they had one and not both, the date. So I'm not going to have any luck finding her. So this is one of those things where you kind of get stuck. So you have to start looking at other records. Um, and um, I'm going to actually go back to my census here because we do have some more information here. So this is my great grandmother, Catherine McGinnis, right? Um, so this here, I was looking at um, 1893. And that was the 1901 census. So in the 1911, she would be 17, possibly 18. And see here, I have Catherine. Um, so let's look at her there. And again, that's just a, um, well, that's just a, uh, mistype there, um, or misread actually. So 
this was born 1892. Um, I said she's born 1893. Again, the census, you really need to be careful because sometimes they just took what your age is and they subtract the year. Um, so if you were born before or after the census date, that could make a difference. Um, so let's look at here. We're looking at we're looking at page 19, family 176. So that does not look, sorry. So you see here we have different family that's not her. Let's modify. Um, we're just going to look for the 1911 census. I can look for 1921 as well. It's possible I can find her there just before she got married. Um, And then going to narrow down her birth, actually. Um, we're going to narrow down her birth to 1893 plus two or minus two years. Again, I just want to take that because uh, depending what they have there. So we have this in 1901. Um, 1911, 1921. This is the one we looked at. And so we have Catherine F, which is the one we determined was her because I believe. Um, family 45. There we go. So we have her there. Um, and so that we have her there born in uh, December 14th. So let's go back here and look at 1921. And at this point, it is very possible she was not in the river anymore. Let's look. So she's a daughter. Um, line 20. So different parents' names. Um... Again, Gaelic is the their mother tongue. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not going to be able to find here Catherine. E. So I'm pretty sure she's Catherine F. Let's change this, and we're going to modify it because I don't want to just look in in Renes <clears throat> in case she had moved. At that point, so we're going to look at the place, and we're going to remove Inverness. Now, again, I'm only at six, so um, so we have the 1921. So she was born. Um, either of these could very well be correct. So let's look at here and see where I would find uh, find her here. It specifically says Cape Breton Hospital. Um, so 
so when I look at that, she's family one, she paid one, line seven. So we have Catherine McGinnis. So this looks like it is actually a hospital. Uh, it says she's attendant, 28, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, Scottish, yes, 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 Gaelic, Presbyterian, okay. Um, let's look at this one. So she's a daughter. Uh, we're in Cape Breton, Cape Breton North and Victoria. Now, this again, I don't expect the, this to be her. We're looking at family 71. So we have Malcolm and Mary as parents. So we're not fine here there. Um, it says Catherine F. That's the, I know the correct one in 1901. Um, so I'm not finding her at any other censuses at that point. Um, I could search and see if she's Catherine McKinnon at that point because she could be. Um, but I, it's kind of a little. She'd have her husband's name, and Catherine and John are pretty common names. My grandmother wasn't born yet, so I wouldn't be able to find her, my grandmother on there, and my grandma's the old sibling that confirmed it's the same family. Um, I know, do know that my, my grandmother, so if I go back here, um, So I spell right on it. So if I look for my, So, um, so I'm looking for Charlotte and she was born in 1922. I know that she actually goes by Florence Charlotte on some things. Um, New Canada, Inverness. Oh, there's my problem. Um, from the births. There we go, Charlotte Florence. This is her, this is her date of birth. Um, so when I look up her birth certificate, like I can find these things. I can find her, her mother signed it, what her, her parents' names were, her mother and her mother's maiden names. 
You notice here she spelled with M-A-C. Everywhere else I've been able to find it in different other places. It's M-C, M-A-C. It's some things, but a lot of them are M-C. Um, so at this point, let's see if it gives the residence of father when child was born was Sydney. Um, my grandmother was born in Sydney. So in 1922, so the year after the census. So would I be able to find my um, my my grandfather, my great grandfather in the Sydney in Sydney in the census? Um, so we're going to modify um, we're going to look at 1921 specifically. We're looking at John. We're looking at John McKinnon, and he was born in uh, 1879, I believe. And we're looking in Nova Scotia. Oh, <laughs> I'm probably not going to find him as a female. So we have in my Kagamo and we have in Halifax. This is more likely. So let's look and John L. Um, he's single. He's a son. He's 41 years old. So he is family number two, line number eight. John L. Gaelic Presbyterian. Um, okay. So he living in Inverness there. Let's let's go back and we'll search for him in the previous two censuses as well. Uh, actually, the previous three. Not that I'm needing to find a lot more information on him because I already know it. Um, so 1921. Oops. Um, census years so we have john j mckinnon let's look mick kinnon so So we found them in 1921. Let's look at actually, I'm going to modify this. We'll just do this. Um, we'll start back and we found them in Inverness. And we're going to, we already found them in 1921. So let's look for them in 1911. I'm looking for Inverness. So we have Johnny. Johnny McKinnon. It's nowhere that his name. So let's let's see if we can find him as a McKinnon. Let's get rid of his year birth. So, now, 
interesting thing is, um, it doesn't in this one. It would be nice if you could search for other people that are on the same page. But it doesn't do that. So, hey. Hi, Nick. How you doing? Sorry, I just see your comment coming there now. I, I've been working away here and um, started out talking about people starting their family tree and sort of how they should go about and it's kind of showed a past to couple different great grandparents for you people just joining now just to recap um how you can find someone very easily and you can find others it takes a little bit more work uh, and the goal behind this is you're you're trying to get those things so you can um you can narrow it down um so you're watching from calgary hi how you doing um so yeah what I'm doing right now is I'm searching. I showed through my um, my grandmother's side of the family how I was evil, easily able to follow her her um, her father's side of the family back, and I was able to get back from me back to six generations very easily just using actually the Nova Scotia archives. Um, now we're on her mother's side. There's a sort of a a um, sort of a, a stop there where you're you using the same same tools and getting the information you're, you're stuck so then you start looking having to look for other things to um so th through this i was her mother's side i her my grandmother's mother's side i i was able to have already nailed down what the maiden name is and her parents by going back through census, but then you hit a, a, a roadblock. So uh, I was just showing the different ways you have to, especially with a lot of these Scottish names. Um, again, you're looking for for uh, you're looking for really the spelling can be anywhere. Um, it, you you have the the mix and the max all mixed up at different times. Uh, I've even seen it. Um, for instance, in one record, I found McKinnon's and anybody on in that group of census is all the McNames were and Mac names um, were listed. For instance, Kinnon apostrophe MC. Um, and actually, I think it's this one here that person I'm looking for it. The record that I'm specific, I specifically uh, found that. So you really need to sometimes dig in deep and and find those records by doing a little search and it can sometimes be disappointing when you're first starting getting in the your family tree and you you're able to track one line as i did tonight really literally in 10 15 minutes i was able to track her her father's line uh, down to um, very easily whereas her mother's using the same tools techniques takes a lot more digging um and it's really good to when you're doing this to to record the the things the fail paths as well sometimes um because you, you don't want to keep going down the the same um the same false road sometimes because even uh, other records you might find that there's uh things missing um so once you start getting that information, like we were at the point where we, we sort of did that basic research, you need to start compiling it. Um, it can be s as simple as a, an Excel spreadsheet is, um, or a more complex software. Um, Wikitree is a great free source and it's collaborative. So I, I, I often, I'm a big booster of Wikitree just because um, it does let you have a certain amount of control uh, until you get back so many generations because it then becomes more collaborative um but there's a kind of a code of conduct and most of the people you work there with you have a generally good um good relationship with for instance on one of my ancestors i was just recently looking and it's going actually back on that um on the McGinnis line, um, I know that my great grandfather 
um, my great great grandfather was Charles McGinnis, and then his father's name it looked to be Dan. And from the records I could find, because of um, through the census, he he would have been born in 1821 in Scotland. There was another Dan McGinnis that was born in 1821 near the same area. Um, again, just born in Scotland because that's what you can get from the census. It doesn't always have the exact community, which would have been great. Um, and I had the, I knew, it knew the year that they were born based on the age. Um, but it turns out that this person I had in my wiki tree set up when somebody else was looking at it, they know that person specifically wound up being somebody with just happens to have the same name, lived in the same community um, and roughly the same birth date, the same birth year. Cause that's, I didn't have a specific date. Um, but this person was a bachelor all his life. So he didn't have any children. So it'd be impossible to be a descendant of them, um, which is really fine. I, I was great with it. The, the, um, a couple things, the, the person that did it, I, I know, um, cause I've worked with them before on other things is very accurate in their, their sources and was able to confirm without a doubt that that was the, the, the right Dan McGinnis, um, that the, the, for the, as far as the place, the place of birth. So it was very easy. You just make a modification in my tree and the, still the, all the, the, um, and it was just the, the place of birth that was really specific. This person was born on the Isle of Rum in the record. And I don't have a specific location, but the, of it i assume because this person lived in the same community that they're likely were the same person um same birth, birth year same both being from scotland and being able to confirm that it, it was great it, was, it wasn't a big difference because i didn't have a link to the wrong person i just had his place of birth wrong so easily to remove that um you know the, the person would have made that change i would have they wanted to do that they could have that and i would get a thing whether i accepted it's change or if there was a different person they had the right person wanted to merge it you have a certain bit of control when you go back more generations you don't but it's yeah wiki tree is really great for uh, doing that collaborative stuff um you have mckinnon's in your family tree from nova scotia it is a very very common name um so yes, uh, yeah, you'll, 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 you'll find it, it very common, especially since, and especially even the, the, some of the first names you get a lot of commonality. And again, it's because of the um, patriotic naming conventions of Scottish people. Um, so you have where you, you name usually the first child after, um, the father's father. So if you have a, a John McKinnon, for instance, and he had several, uh, several children, their first sons are probably all going to be named John McKinnon and they very well might be born around the same birth year, uh, depending on the age difference of the brothers. Um, so you, you, you sometimes you run into that where um, they're related to just not, the right one you're looking for. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, I find my, my Scottish relatives are the hardest in that sense. Um, when you get to Scotland, there's really good records on, on a, a lot of them, which is great. Um, I do use family search. Um, again, I'm a, I use it for the resources of searching for the records. Uh, I'm really, I, I kind of make a rule. It's very rare that I would put something in my, what I call my proper family tree, where I, I'm almost without a doubt that this is the right person. Um, sometimes I will do it for when I'm exploring possibilities, but also just when I'm exploring records, because there are people there that are very diligent and have good sources, but I've also run into things where um, I have a 
a person is I've seen a family tree where a person that's showing as the grandfather was born 40 years before the grandson. So um, unless they were some kind of space, a time traveler, um, so sometimes time traveler, I know that's not accurate. Um, so I, I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm very selective when I, I look at those things, when I see what um, family search and it's not, it's not anything against family search. It's not anything against the people. And you'll find that in all, all of these in ancestry. A lot of times, if you go just with hints, you'll, there's some people that will do that and they'll build a whole family tree and you might run into those things because those hints aren't right. And if I was basing um, my connections and putting those people in the family tree and building out um, without checking the sources and making sure they were accurate, Again, it's, sometimes it's hard because the sources are very limited. Um, you you get things where, especially when you're transitioning um, from one country to a different, uh, often they'll just give the the birthplace as the uh, the original country as opposed to naming a, a specific town, um, which would be really helpful. Um, you know. Um, Unfortunately, the people back in the 1800s weren't thinking of their descendants and what they might be looking for. Um, I don't know if it's the same in Australia, Vanessa, if you, you run into that with your, your relatives where you're looking at those and you, um, you're able to trace that they were born in um, outside of Australia, but it, it's, it's, uh, it gets a little harder once you're there, especially if there's not any... Um, any anything more that you can find if you can find the deaf record in, in, in like for my, in my instance in Canada it might have it might have the name of the place they were born the town but in my experience it most likely still just has the country uh, so it gets really you really get in the, you really get sort of you stuck on those things and finding the the right places, um, right people when you get there. Um, I know that I, I, I struggle that my Irish side is even really harder because, um, there's not off the, the Irish records aren't as always as nice as, uh, some of the Scottish records to search, um, just cause there's a large number of them that are missing. Um, now that's one of the reasons getting to know to your communities, um, and the community history of where your ancestors are from are very important because people tended to, um, when they came over to North America and they first settled, um, sometimes they, they didn't really have a choice, for instance, in the clearance, if they were part of the clearances, which most of my relatives um, from Scotland were. Um, I had a couple that came after and a couple came before, um, but most of them, especially on my uh, mother's mother's side, um, were almost exclusively from the clearances. But what happened is uh, they were sometimes assigned land uh, or they came and they they generally still ch were a lot of people in the same community. Um, so you, you'll find them that way. If you know the, if you, if you're able to trace your ancestor and you know they're part of this community and the other people in the community, it will sometimes give you a good hint where to start looking in, in Scotland. Um, and I found that helpful at different times um, because I was able to know specifically that, for instance, I was talking about Farquhar Campbell, Farquhar, its name is still a hard time saying, um, Campbell, I, 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 was, I knew from um, from other records and the people that he associated with from some public records I was able to find in histories that they were from um, Tyree and Cole and I was the Isle of, and I was able to find some records therefore on him that would would lead me to believe that it's the right and this is where DNA does is really helpful um, I sort of went on at the beginning of this live stream talking about people just use it for the ethnicities um, estimates and 
how they're really missing a lot. And it's not the, the great purpose of the, you can uh, make those connections by, um, by seeing, by, by finding people that do have those, those same connections um, to that community. For instance, maybe somebody that was part of the family that is still in Scotland. Um, so you're able to make that connection that way, or somebody else who has traced um, another family member that would be connected from there. Um, so you can able to, to verify and, and Farquhar was a, is a person I'm actually able to very, very much um, make some DNA connections and been able to find some fascinating things. He's actually my third great grandfather and his um, grandson, his, sorry, his son, my uh, second great grand uncle, um, unbeknownst to me, who got married in um, Boston and he married a person from Prince Edward Island, which is where I now live. And when, after they got married, they settled back in Prince Edward Island and they wound up going to the church that I go to now. And specifically not just the church, but lived right in this small little community that the church is in is the church sort of served a, a larger area. It was a very large church. Um, and there's, I, I was able to actually go back and look at the church record books. And these are probably the, I have to say the nicest record books I've ever seen. The, um, writing in them, it looks like somebody that was a professional calligrapher um, who was a minister at, at one point because he also looks like he redid some of the older books. Um, it is it is so nice and clear, and I've been able to, to meet the, the the not meet the people because all his kids wound up leaving Prince Edward Island, but I've actually been able to connect with their descendants and connect the DNA, so I, I know that is the. The, the common ancestor. So, yeah, the cousin matches are really what are 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 the valuable resource in the when you do those DNA tests because um, they make those connections. Um, yeah, and it's it is wonderful. It's it's because the church I go, I go to I go to for specific reasons. When I I moved here, it was the uh, only church that had similar beliefs to what I held um, and just in a lot of specific in the way of practice. Um, it's a, a church, a free church of Scotland. Um, that was originally a church of Scotland. Interesting, even story further, this park ward, the, he was uh, um, in the community he was in, he called the church minister to, to Cape Breton and that church minister wound up leaving Cape Breton coming to Prince Edward Island and he actually um, led a couple revivals here in Prince Edward Island and he was the first minister in the church that I go to now so this is stuff all unbeknownst to me when I moved here and when I chose to go to the church I did um, so it's yeah it's it's really interesting just to see those connections um, and and it's great to see that um, DNA to to prove to prove that it's not just th that all my research actually was right when I I found I started finding these things. Um, even you know, just one of my really good friends. It's um, his family that they had married into. It'd be one of his ancestors' family, um, not a direct descendant, but. Again, like me, it would be an uncle or aunt, in this case, an aunt that he was married to um, I, several times, great, uh, two or three times, great grand aunt on his part, married to my second great grand uncle. So uh, it's, it's really kind of neat. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a small world, and especially when you <laughs> look at people for uh, their migration patterns and stuff, I, I've been able to connect with people in Australia and New Zealand. Um, through DNA and then actually trace them back and find that common ancestor. And um, there's some great tools there now that um, will do some of that work for you. If you have a good, a good family tree 
upload it along with your DNA. That's the thing that always bu bugs me. You see these really close connections and you go to search on them and they're like, they have no tree. So you can't even begin to, you, you might be able to determine if they were, because ancestry now is able to determine if it's your, which parent side it is. And through looking at it, you can, and the world as you do know, you can see if it's your mother or father's where it makes the connection. So, but yeah, it, it, it makes it harder to, to dig. And it, it's really reg regrettable because sometimes I've, they're, they're fairly close to third or fourth cousins and, um, and, and you'd love to be able to sort of help them to triangulate some other relatives. So you, you would again have that, that proof if they, they make the connection there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I use family, uh, search. I use ancestry. Um, I use my heritage for the, for getting information. I keep my, my main tree, what I want to call my uh, official tree. I have a, an official tree and some working trees, um, on locally, but sort of my, the, as far as a public official tree, the, would be on WikiTree I, I use. And again, it, it's um, it's collaborative, which is nice. It can cause some problems if you have people that are willy nilly, but they're because of their their actual, um, they actually have a standard a that you need to sign as a member of WikiTree when you're doing it. Um, and there's a really big, um, big emphasis on sources and making sure that you you put things uh, the sources in it it really <laughs> it bothers me sometimes because I feel like I'm back at high school doing uh, papers and and university doing papers and putting all my footnotes and bibliography but getting that that stuff in there it's it's important um, because often even myself when I'm looking for myself I'll I'll put it just I might just have a link to where I found the source, um, but I've been caught at times, you know, you because somebody's changed their website. So you go back and you try to find that record. Um, so, it, you know, it, 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 it kind of forces me to be a little more, um, a little more determinate in uh, finding, in actually putting my source. And one of the great things I like about WikiTree um, and that in pertains to my uh, my Scottish ancestors. And I'll show you here in a second here. It's going to log in. Um, WikiTree has a lot of great, um, a lot of great um, of ex extensions or tools with it. Um, and they have this one thing. It's called the Sorcerer, which I really like. And I'll, I'll show you why I like it. Um, so I have WikiTree open here, but I actually, I'm going to stop sharing for a second because I got, got to log into something else. Um, so if, if you, you search your, your Scottish records, chances are you're using Scotland's people. Um, Scotland's people, I really like, um, you know, you have to pay for their, um, for copies of their records. And sometimes you're a little, you don't get to see the full thing. So you, you might be hesitant, even though it's, it's not an expensive amount. Uh, you know, being Scottish, a penny, a penny saved is a penny earned for sure. Um, and by, uh, so they have a really nice tool in WikiTree, uh, one of their, ex extensions you don't have to be on wikitree to actually use this extension in the way that i use it um so i'm gonna put this over here and i think when i share it now um so i'm gonna do the entire screen yes okay so you're gonna see the notepad and the reason is it's, it's very important so if i'm searching for anybody um, so I'm going to do one of my, my searches that I know I have Anderson's and I'm, I'm going to search for an Andrew and 
at this point for this demonstration, I'm not really concerned if I'm looking at the right person. Let's look at birth records. And I'm going to put, so I'm looking and I think, well, maybe, um, well, all my Andersons were actually over here between before um, 1829. So um, these ones are way too soon. So, but if we're going to look from 1790 until um, 1820. So if I'm, I'm searching here, uh, I kind of, and I have someone, I have a record. I'm going to update my results, but I'm not sure if it's really the right person. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to go, sorry, I want to go back because I'm not searching this record. I made a mistake. I want to search the, their, um, I'm going to search not their statutory registry, but their um, their church registers. And so I'm going to go 1780 to 1820. So if I have a record here, and I really, I don't want to pay to see it, but maybe this person is the right person. The Wikitree has this neat little tool. Um, it's an extension, and it, it's, um, it builds me a citation. So if I just click on this record, I'm... I'm not opening it, so I'm not having to pay for it, which would cost me six credits, um, which is approximately $5 Canadian. Um, if I know this is the right one, I don't mind paying that, so I have a copy of it, but I'm just trying to gather some information and explore. So if I take this, I can tell it I want to build a, <clears throat> a citation. I can have a couple type things. I have a source citation, uh, an inline citation, and a narrative with citation. Narrative citation is what I usually pick. So I do that and it will tell me a lot of things on here. Um, so it tells me Andrew Anderson, son of Andrew Anderson, and then it gives his mother's names. Um, it tells me when he was baptized and, and some of the records will have a little bit more information there so you can find out things which you might not um, see just from from the actual um looking just there so uh, i can sort of get the the details of the record um so i can go back especially when you're you're starting to um build you know that uh, an ancestor for instance in this case um, i know andrew anderson's a very common name through generations in fact my middle name is andrew named after my grandfather was an andrew anderson who was named after his uh his great grand grandfather who was an andrew anderson who was named after his grandfather was an andrew anderson and he was the first uh, andrew anderson that come to nova scotia in my family and his father's name was andrew anderson so i know that you know if I, so, so if i was looking for that andrew anderson's father i might um i might want to see if i have a some right possible records so it gives me a, a, a little thing to to get some of those sources and the other thing good with getting that information is um i can now use something um like family search that might have those records um public that i can view the actual uh, view the actual thing so i might have some more details so i can better find the actual record i'm looking for or i can wind up um if i do think it's accurate at that point i would view it and um i'd, I'd look at a copy of the certificate um this andrew anderson's actually the one i was looking for this is the andrew anderson who um was the first andrew anderson to um the first Andrew Anderson, um, it's his father who came, this is the, yeah, Elizabeth Logan. Um, so yeah, he's the Andrew Anderson that, on that line that I would be the first one to come over to um, Nova Scotia. Um, so it's, so I have that information there. Um, so it's this Andrew Anderson and Elizabeth Logan 
this Andrew Anderson, and this is his son. This is the one who I said is my my grandfather's um, my grandfather's great grandfather um, would be this Andrew Anderson here. Um, so it's and I I believe I already probably have that record saved, um, but it's the you're able to go back and I, I'm able to gather that information. So if I want to get the information on this, I again would, I would go and I can build my narrative with citation. The narrative is nice just because it just gives you a little bit um, there. So it's easier to, to read and understand it. And it's how I would put it in my, um, in my, um, biography section. I, I want that. I can just copy and paste that right over there. So it's kind of nice. It gives me a, a little bit of information there that I don't have um, as simply as just looking at it because it tells me everything tells me the location, the page, everything all in one little thing. So it's really easy for copying and pasting uh, and without having to remember what all these numbers are here it tells me exactly there. So if I go look for that particular record, if I was looking for it somewhere else, I'd be able to find it. Um, so let me see there. Now I know Vanessa, you actually had a question last week. You were looking for some relatives, a, a relative that was born in Montreal and you knew that their last name was McGregor, but you think that's, um, either a, a, a spouse's, uh, that was their spouse's name, um, uh, yeah, I've used the, the, the Jed Compare on Wikitree, um, I, I'm not a, I, I really don't like using the Jedcom files that you find because there's so again so many of them out there people over the years have records that they they've placed different places and it doesn't have it it doesn't have the um the right sources when you go down the um go down the the um the 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 field you, you start, you can get overwhelmed and you can get too much. Um, and I think sometimes it can tend to make myself lazy is if I'm just accepting these things without then going and try, trying to do um, the research. It, uh, they're, they're great, some of these hints and stuff on these different sites because uh, sometimes they are correct and sometimes they can um they can give you the right information and sometimes they're actually really helpful in giving you the wrong information in the sense that um you'll follow them and you'll look at them and you'll you'll be able to determine from the information there that you're looking at the the wrong person um and you can make note of that so you're you don't have to um you, you don't get sucked in looking down that path and that same person at a later point um, so there's, there's advantages to it, but sometimes people will just blindly, like I said, just basically accept everything there as being fact without doing that extra little bit of research. One second. So yeah, they'll, sorry, they'll, they'll do that. Um, they won't do that little bit of research to get um to to make sure it's right the the jedcom the uh, when you're when you're uploading into wikitree um do you have to do a, a lot of work on it too so um i found it, it it's easier i've used the jedcom from wikitree i've actually downloaded my jedcom from wikitree and used it in to my uh, when i was changing software on my um, home computer. So I use that as a copy. And I use that as, again, I'd have multiple family trees that I have. And 
they're sort of where I where I place my investigation, whether I, I'm looking at ones where I'm looking at probabilities, I'll have those probability trees. And then when I confirm them, I'll move them onto my real tree. Um, so with my wiki tree, I, I tend to to see it as being my my accurate tree, at least publicly um, that I have out there. Uh, I, again, it's just and I, and I have a limited information. I probably have about I think I have about seventeen hundred records maybe on my wiki tree, um, whereas in on actual my actual other family trees I probably have more, but I don't. They're not all confirmed, so I don't really want. I get. I don't want to be that person that's giving that misleading information to a, a possible cousin. Um, <clears throat> so I've been on for almost three hours now, which is really long for me. Um, I've actually just been enjoying this. Um, sorry, I didn't see all on there earlier when to to chat with because. Um, I, I do like, uh, I do like the interaction, I, but I get wrapped up in my, my work. I want, I want to try to, I, I got to figure out and, and remember the, to look up every so often and, uh, in my chat, I, I kind of forget that. Um, so yeah, it's just the, with the, when you're building your family tree as a, as a new person doing family history that which a lot of today was sort of concentrating on that those people that are get don't know where to start um don't know the type of things that they'll run into um you know one of the things is i was talking about how easy it is sometimes to seem like things are going really easy you get all those connections you get all those um people and down one line you might be able to you might be able to build it out fairly fast to several generations but uh you when you go to your next line you, you get you get stopped at um you know a great grandparent um i i literally had a brick wall with my 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 great grandmother on my um my mother's mother's side um for about 10 years um because the records were were hard and the names were common uh so i was looking for and and the the information i had was very limited um part of the problem was that i couldn't even find a marriage certificate for her and her husband uh, my great grandfather so that had none of the information i would find on parentage i he died in um, a lot earlier, so I did actually have his parents' information from his death death uh, registration, which helped me down his path a, a lot quicker and a lot sooner. Um, she died in my lifetime, uh, not in the the period that the records are publicly available. So I can't, I couldn't find even on her death registration when I even looked, and um, I found her. Um, obituary at my my mother's house my grandmother's house it was a very scarce the thing that actually helped me was finding a, a photo of her father and her uncle um because i knew what her father's name was um because my grandfather my grandmother had known that um but i didn't know the uncles and um, I'd never gotten that information from my grandmother. She um, she died when she was 99. I talked to her, but she was, at that point was getting scarce and forgetful. But I found a, a photo that she had of her grandfather and her uncle that was, um, she had written grandfather and then uncle, um, <laughs> uncle Donald. And then, uh, so I was able to, oh, now when I'm looking, cause, and I knew, one of her, my grandmother's aunts, uh, my great grandmother's sister's name, because she also lived in my lifetime. Um, so the problem was I had limited, um, limited things when I was searching to, to try to find them elsewhere. Uh, I was then able to 
to find them in a, a census and get other family member names. Um, for instance, um, my grandmother, great grandmother's, um, I was able to know I had her mother's name as well because I was able to find them in, in the census. Um, and it, it had the, the right, um, it had the right birth, birth year. I wasn't, I didn't have a positive birth date. Um, but with that and with the other information, I was, um, I, I went from narrowing, having originally four to five possible families because it was a common name. Um, and to having one that sort of now I was able to match all, all these criteria for and confirm that, that, that is the, the right place. Um, and again, DNA evidence helped, uh, helped actually make sure that that connection was valid. Yeah, uh, Nick, I, uh, yeah, loading the GEDCOM file up in the wiki tree, there's still a lot to do before they, they let you post it. There's a little work, some work in it. Some people tried to do some tricks to get around it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's part of, there, there's an honor code, so there's certain things, you, like, you, you do want to make sure your stuff is well sourced. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions. I usually, at, at this point, I've, I'm actually usually gone probably about an hour before this. Um, I usually do what I like to call uh, last call. Um, last call! Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I need to announce it's last, last call, call at, at the, the bar. bar. Oh. So if you have any questions, anything you want, um, you enter it in the, the chat now, and I'm going to stick around for a few minutes to answer that. Again, I do have a form that's down in the description of this. Um, I encourage you to um, write your question in there because there's some information to fill out one of the big things is that I have a spot where you can link any public family trees you might have because that does help. Um, and I will try to try to answer your question, whether it's on a future live stream or an actual video, depending on what the question is. And um, and I'll definitely try to, to work with you to try to um, help you break down your some of your brick walls if you're having them. Um, So I'm not seeing any questions. Nobody's jumping at the gun there. So I, I just want to thank you all for dropping by and dropping in the stream. I do uh, really appreciate it, um, every one of you. Um, and uh, just, I just want to thank you um, and encourage you to keep searching for your ancestors and drop by um, Thursday nights. Uh, I've been playing around with different times and this seems to be a, a, a good one. It works for me most, most weeks. Um, I will be having actually one in a couple weeks. I'm going to be going to um, Halifax and I'll be doing some live streaming from there as well as doing some, um, I'm, I'm hoping to do a couple visits to the, a couple videos on visits specifically around Halifax, including visiting the, um, the Nova Scotia archives um, to give, I've done a few videos about using it to online resources. So I'm hoping to get a few um, because they have so many more resources that aren't available online to um, want to show people how to use those and, and get to them. Um, so thank you again, once again, and you have a great day and um, I'll, I'll talk to you next week. If you're a buddy, search for answer. Barrow.